In this lesson, we'll take a look at the creation and use of namespaces. Now, you've been using the expression using namespace standard all semester long in every one of your programs. So now you're going to find out what this means. Well, C++ operates on the resolution of names. When it sees an identifier like Cout or a word like inline or a declared variable, it has to look someplace to resolve what is the meaning behind that identifier. It's going to look in namespaces. Well, there are several namespaces, and we're going to start with how you create your own namespace. And this is how you do it. The syntax is simply namespace, that's the key word, and then whatever it is you're going to name your namespace. Suppose we want to create one called price, and we're going to put the code for a function that's going to calculate a square root. When I put that code inside these two curly braces, then I have in essence, created a scope for that function. Now, of course, I've just got the prototype here. You would also need to do the very same thing for the code for that namespace. And one of the neat things about doing this with namespaces is that it's open. That is to say, I can put the prototype here for this function in namespace price here, and then someplace else I could put the code for the function also in a similar construct. So I can open the namespace, close it, open it, and close it, quite unlike a class, where if you open it, you put code in it. Once you close it, that's it. You can't reopen it to put more code into it. Establishing a namespace really establishes a scope. I have options as to how I can refer to this function. Here's option one. I create a variable d of type double, and I set it equal to price, colon, colon, square root. So I'm scoping that function call. I'm saying to the compiler, I want the price version of SQRT. Alternatively, I can say using price, colon, colon, square root. When I do this, that means that any time the compiler sees SQRT, that name, it will look for it in the price namespace. Option three, when I say using namespace price, and then say double D is equal to square root nine, it's going to look in the price namespace for the identification of SQRT. That will work fine until there is a conflict. If I use elements in the price namespace and the standard namespace, I'm going to have a problem. Okay, let's take a look at preventing these conflicts. Option number one, I can say D is equal to price square root, S is equal to the standard square root. Maybe I've got two different definitions I like to use for square root, standard and mine. This is fine. This is OK. The compiler knows where to look for those definitions. Option two, if I say using price square root, using standard square root, well, that's fine until I actually use them. Okay, This is going to be problem code. The compiler, when it sees square root, it doesn't know which one to use. So that's no good. Option three. I say using namespace price, using namespace standard. Again, that's fine until I use a name that is common in both namespaces, like square root. And that is going to be a problem. OK, as I said, open scoping is really a nice aspect of using C++. Let's take a look. We have these two header files, Jose H and Alicia.h. And in Jose, I have namespace price. I have an int by the name of Jose, okay? And in Alicia, I've got in that header file contained within the namespace price uh, a character variable called Alicia. If then in main here, I pound include Jose.h and Alicia.h and state I'm using namespace price, then when I refer to Jose or Alicia, the compiler knows what those variables are, where they come from. Okay, let's take a look at this array. I have an array class defined. It's a templated array class, and it's defined in the price namespace. I am using indirection down here at the bottom. I'm going to pound include array.hpp so that I have the implementation of that templated code for the print function. But again, it's in the price namespace. So over here in main, I pound include array.h. 
I tell the compiler I'm using the price array, and then when I refer to array, it knows which array to grab. Okay, alternatively, if I have the templated class defined in the price namespace, I can simply say in the HPP, hey, this is for the price array print function, and that will satisfy the compiler. Okay, what I've covered so far are the namespaces that you create and name yourself. There is also the unnamed namespace. You have been creating unnamed namespaces all semester long. All the code that you wrote goes into what is called the unnamed namespace. So you create this class array, and here's the code for member functions, and then in main, you're using an array. How does the compiler know what array that is? Because it looks in the unnamed namespace. It is the namespace that is automatically created when you write a program. And that's the essence of namespaces. Now you know the truth.